Hey guys, Sean here. Evan. We are continuing our series of reviews on the Die Hard franchise with Die Hard 2, or sometimes known as Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Yeah! I'm sorry. I just still like that last scene. Said, oh. Not touch the hat. In Soviet Russia, hats touch you. In Soviet Russia, hats touch you. I don't know. I can't anyway. Say. So this is a 1990 American action film, second entry in the franchise of five movies, uh, released 4th July 1990, which, okay. Uh, I'll just do the name so you don't screw them up. Before we go on, I find that a little interesting. Hand me the uh, Live for Your Die Hard DVD first. Yes, master. Stop with that master shit. Okay, I find it weird how this movie takes place around Independence Day, yet this one was released on Independence Day. <laughs> That's kind of funny. But anyway. Um, it was written, or it was directed by Rennie Harlan, with, written by Hugo, S Stephen E. D'Souza and Doug Richardson. Stars Bruce Willis as John McClane. Film also co-stars Bonnie Bedelia reprising the role of Holly McClane, William Sadler, Art Evans, William Atherton, which is reprising his role as Dick. Who's a dick? <laughs> in every movie. Yes. Die Hard, Ghostbusters, probably other stuff he's been in. At least he, this is the last time he gets to be a dick in this franchise. Yeah, but he also dies in The Crow. Ooh. Three. Ooh. Ah. He was in the third one. So was Kirsten Dunst, though. Um, but, but anyway. I've Frank, never seen The Crow 3. Yeah, it's okay. It's Franco scene. Nero, Dennis Franz, Fred <laughs> Thompson, John Amos, <coughs> and, <coughs> and Reginald Bill Johnson, who returns briefly. Sucks, because he was a big role in the last one. Um, this movie was... A, the screenplay was written by Stephen E. DeZoza and Doug Richardson, adapted from Walter Wagner's novel, 58 Minutes. Much like how the first movie was adapted from the novel, um, Never Something. Something like Nothing Lasts Forever by Richard Thorpe or something like that? That one. I've read that book. Good book. I haven't read this one, although on the uh, Wicked State website... It sounds like it, this one focuses more on the story a little bit more than the last one did. Mm -hmm. Although, it, I, strange with the books. Well, because with the first movie, they had to take out any references to the detective to make yeah. it a standalone movie. Plus, so, of course, they had the to books, make some changes. It, the storyline focuses on the McLean, even though it's not called the book, but in the books, it focuses on him rescuing his daughter, while in the movies, they change it to a wife. Which, again, not to... And then they have him rescuing the daughter in the fourth movie, which probably isn't even based on a book. No, it's actually based more on a news article. <laughs> All right. Yes, and Die Hard 5 was based on an original storyline. Like, completely original. Which is probably why some people hated. I could see that. Um, but yeah, um, so basically the plot of the movie is a bunch of planes flying around. Psycho terrorist guy wants to do something, and otherwise, otherwise the, the planes will run out of gas and go crashing. The terrorists was try they, they were transporting this criminal who I believe was the leader of a drug cartel, and then that's why they were having trouble, were causing trouble with the planes, because they were bringing him to justice, but they wanted him released. Yeah, but at least when the first movie, they actually had a reason to be there. They wanted the treasures or whatever, not trying to free somebody. Yeah. But then, and then, oh, so which kind of makes that one scene kind of, kind of useless when Alan Rickman's saying, "I want you to free this group and this group and heck, free this one too." And like they're just different terror terrorist organizations that probably have no connection to each other. So well, what I'm saying is the plot was basically just them going in to steal the money they had. Yeah, it wasn't just trying to free somebody. I know. So yeah, just just to make this plot line go even longer than the first one, let's just say, heck, we want you to free pretty much yeah, every let's take, terrorist organization ever. Let's take that one line of dialogue that Rickman had and then stretch it into the entire movie. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Like with Rogue One, they took a line of dialogue, a line from the Wolf and Crawl, and stretched into two hours. <laughs> Yay! But yeah, at least um, that turned out to be pretty good. Still, yeah, it had good points. Uh, so the movie was two hours and three minutes. Budget was seventy million dollars with <coughs> with about two forty two forty million back made back at the box office. <clears throat> so my good sir, yes, what would you think of this movie? Woo! Love this movie. Okay. 
Um, I give this I give this movie just as good as a rating as I gave the first one nine. Well, I actually find the first movie a lot better because, I mean, granted where credits do, they didn't have uh, John McTiernan do this one because he was off doing Red Hunt Red Hunt for October at the time. So they this had, one was done by Rennie Harlan. Yep. Don't know what else he did. I actually think he directed one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I think. Oh really? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Nightmare Four. Okay. And he also did Deep Blue Sea, Cliffhanger, oh. Long Last Kiss Goodnight. So, good movies. Well, depends on who you ask about that one. I don't know. I like Cliffhanger and Deep Blue Sea. I'm not about that one. Depends on who you ask about mm-hmm. Nightmare 4. I still liked it. I thought it was good. Um, so, yeah. Um, what's there to say about this movie? I, it's, it's still an endurable movie. I wouldn't say it's quite ass classic, but it's I still I think it's funny up. how, like you said... There was a scene in this movie where McLean's in like a like a boiler room. And he's like, "How can the guy one guy go through the same thing twice?" <laughs> and you're like, "Wow, self-aware." <laughs> he's like, two basements, two groups of terrorists. How can one guy go through the same thing twice?" And I was awareness. Like, I know, right? It was funny. Um, the, when the complaints I had, it didn't have as many good one-liners. True. Yeah, like. Yeah, they didn't have many one liars like in the last movie. They had that one, and then there was. Oh yeah, there was a one where um that dick guy Richard or where was was commu- in the bathroom on that one plane communicating with the terrorists were trying to get them to release it, and Holly McLean found out what was going on, and she took this taser because it starts off with this old. The movie starts off with Holly in the plane this old lady saying, "I people used to believe in all this guns and bullshit." Me. I carry one of these suckers, and she's got this high-powered taser, and she goes, mm-hmm. she says, she finds out what he's doing, goes in the bathroom, and like, right when she goes in, the guy says, this yeah. might be my last broadcast. And she tases him and says, amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Holly was actually pretty good in this movie. Yeah. Sadly, they don't bring her back to the next three movies. I mean, she does have, like, a voiceover role in, in, in With a Vengeance, and then photo role in with Live Free, and then they mention her yeah, and a good day to die. Holly's hard. actually pretty badass in this one. Oh yeah, because I, I remember in the fifth movie when I see in theaters, like mentioned something about. I think Jack mentioned something about his mother's cooking or something. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what else, but they do mention because even John's like, <coughs> "How do you get your reaction if you found out you had this kind of work line of work?" <laughs> and so yeah, they, they she is kind of not forgotten throughout the series. Yeah, but, she did. She's yeah. not physically there. They yeah. do only mention her throughout the series. Which well, maybe that's why they actually gave her more, a lot more character development this time around. They thought she's not going to be really coming back. Let's well, just I kind of... think it was more of the plot line because in the fourth one they're rather like divorced. Yeah, but she can. You can say we're not. She's not really going to be part of this franchise that much. So which really pisses me off about the original that's that's, story. Yeah, it's like what the fuck. Better go out with the bang. Exactly. Or a taste in this. In case. <laughs> but yeah, um, like, I would agree with him. There is not really much, wasn't much of a score, to be honest. Yeah, and, there was way less music in this one than the original. I, the, the music in this is, like, absolutely, like, unexistent. Pretty much, unless you count the, the Christmas music. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, pretty much during the credits, they have the exact same Christmas song from the first one being ex- sung by the ex- exact same, same guy. guy. I mean, when we saw her before, we almost thought it was it was Alan Rickman. Singing. It sounds so much like him. I was like, nope. I was like, oh, I, I heard the music sir. I said, okay, we need to have Alan Rickman sing this one. Yeah, speaking nope. of Rickman, may you rest in peace, sir. Farewell, professor. <laughs> you will always be Snape to us. Yes. Especially Who's me. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, the music. I mean, I thought the movie was good for the most part, and also. When someone named John McClane tells you there's fucking terrorists around, you better, you better fucking him. listen to him. <laughs> Food for thought, movie makers. Yes. I mean, that was one of the problems with this one. Pretty much the same Every, thing happened. Yeah. Like, it's basically almost the same exact movie, pretty much. Yeah. Except for new location and new terrorist plot. Well, but for the most... Are... It plays ma- mainly the same beats as the first movie. Yes. Oh, like literally. so in the first movie, he did all this stuff by himself, and still they don't trust him. No, it takes 
takes McLean ripping out a gun and then shooting someone blanks with, at them, yeah. And blanks at them say, Oh, now we know. Yeah, it's like they're like, Yeah, this general guy is here to help us take down Colonel Stewart and then it takes Willis grabbing a gun full of blanks, shooting at the cop, and like yeah. This, this is what they were shooting. Fucking blank. And, and the, I, I can smell and the cop's that like, guy being a rat from okay. a mile away. And the cop's like, okay, now we're going to trust McClane. I can smell yeah, that rat Yeah, asshole, away. it took you this long. Like, right when that, I can smell him like a mile away. Right when the cop comes, like, okay, something tells something's up with this guy. Yeah, we're going to have a villain movie. twist here pretty much. Yeah, we're going to have a villain twist. So, yeah, he helps him take down all these people, or we think. And I was like, nope, it's blanks. And then this guy tries to kill McLean and everyone else and sign with the terrorists. And ninety, like ninety-eight percent of the people who work for that freaking airline are all working for the bad guys. Almost like nine, almost everyone in that freaking airport is working with them. You know, it's oh, like wow, that's geez. so familiar. Like <laughs> Batman, all the corrupt cops. And stuff. <laughs> if you ask me, this movie's pretty. If you ask me, this movie's a pretty much a mixture of the first Die Hard movie with like night with the movie Airport 1975 and maybe a little bit of the Turbulence movies mixed in. But I think those movies were made way after this. I've never seen those. So I'll take your word for it. But yeah, all fairness, I thought the movie was good. Not as good as the first. Because it mainly has the same plot beats as the first. Yeah. <laughs> release. No. With the exception of this time, they want to release the terrorists instead of just doing it for money. Pretty much. Although, one thing, one thing you have to get... One thing I will give props to the movie about, at least they change up the scenery every now and then. Yes. A majority is filmed at, the, at an airport, which... I was kind of fascinated when I found out that the airport they filmed in was actually in Michigan. Yes, that was The state we cool. live in. Northern, and no, yet we weren't born yet. We were a year away. Yeah. Nor, Northern Lower Peninsula for Michigan. Mm -hmm. And and then the, there was a couple other segments. There was one when they were like at this, I don't know, it's like a, just a town square at the beginning mm -hmm. or something. And then there was yeah, this little, little village where there was a church. And mm -hmm. the first church was, the first thing with the church was messed up. These two guys who turned out to be the one of the main villains to start up the whole list of shenanigans, they go in this church, shoot the pastor, or whatever you call him. Reverend. Yeah, reverend in the head, right in the forehead, and then just shoot up the church and then leave. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, way to show appreciation to religion. They don't care, dude. They, they don't, don't care. care. Oh. And it always means pretty much the same movies, because yet again, they're German. Yes, German. Why do people always have to assume that? Just because someone's German, they're evil. I have a lot of German ancestry. I'm not evil. Dude, Russians, dude. Russians are portrayed always as evil in movies. So why not Germans? And we're not trying to hate on people. We're just stating how movies plant people out. I like Germans. Germans and Romanians. That's my ancestry. Germans, Romanians, I think a little bit of Polish and a little bit of Welsh. I'm not sure I think about I'm a little bit German, too. I don't know. You kind of look French and Italian. No offense, but you just kind of look a little like French and Italian. I've heard I have part French, a little French in me, and same with Italian. I just feel like why I like pasta. <laughs> well, I like pasta. I'm just saying. Who doesn't? I mean, as far as the bad guy, though, you have to admit Rickman was better. Yeah. Was a way better villain. Because he actually had fucking charisma. It yeah. wasn't just a fucking dick constantly. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, but even though he Rickman did, had at least some humanity to him. Yeah, I mean, not to mention the, the thing scene. I would give to the villain this one. At least he had a crazy looking face. He had a crazy looking face. His face. Well, this is the guy who played that the space space pilot guy in Rocket Man. I don't remember the that one movie. that didn't want Harlan Williams on on the planet on the flight. I I didn't I do not remember that movie. He, he almost looked a little bit like one of the villains from the movie Laser Mission with Brandon Lee. Just, I know it's more like him, but he just had that, that creepy face that the one guy had. It was just, mm. just this weird smile and his eyes wide. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, and here's the thing how the fuck are they able to hotwire the system so they can control the airport? That I will never know. You can do a lot of stuff with computers. Obviously. I didn't know they could do that, though. You could pretty much do anything with computers. Oh, now I fucking know. Don't even guess. You do. And now I hurt. Little French bastard. Oui, oui, I disagree. Oh, shut up, you dumb cunt. 
You see what I have to put up with? <laughs> yeah, um, for the most part, I thought Randy Harlan handled the movie very well. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Wish the, and I've only seen two of his movies, to be honest. Wish the music was better. And it was the same oh, yeah, composer I, as the first movie, so yeah, and, and, in two years he can't get better? He has to make less music? And I was, I was kind of disappointed when I didn't hear the iconic music. I mean, he, he actually did, even though I, he did better with the music with the first one, which I was complaining about. And I was hoping, well, at least they should bring back that one piece of music near the end that was mused by other people and pretty much all the other ones, like Beethoven's Mind. They don't even do that. I was actually thinking they could have done that when the when like the plane was about to take off and they exploded. It was like, no, we're not gonna do it. We're just gonna stick to shit. No, pretty much, yeah. Nah. And pretty much like every diehard movie made after this had that song during the credits, during the movie, during the trailers. It was like, fuck, you could say it was like the iconic music, but nope, <laughs> absent in this. Pretty much like all music. So this is probably... it's, it's it, I'd, I'd still say this is still a pretty endurable movie. Yeah. It's, it still keeps the blood and the the violence. Yeah. A lot of good shit. I mean, where I would rank this in this series, uh, this franchise? I don't know. Like literally, I don't know. I know it's not really all that high for me. But I really don't know where to rank this. I would give it an eight point five. I'd probably say seven. I don't know. Yeah. I so, gave the first one a nine. So. Well, this will probably be one of our shorter videos. I well actually, if anything, because it's pretty much being the same movie, the lack of music, the not even though I have to admit uh, it was still a good actor, but the the villain lacking good charisma and humanity I, and humanity. The at I mean, least the villain there was twist even, was good. I mean, okay, there was even a scene in the first movie where Rickman tried to act like he was someone else yeah. to throw Willis off. We only get that type of scene in this movie. So for for those problems, like four, four maybe five problems, I would say eight is the highest I'll give this. Going I'd, from nine to eight. I'd probably say seven point five eight is around there. Yeah. Still, still an enjoyable movie. Yeah. Anyone who enjoyed it back then can enjoy it today. Mm. Still the kind of movie that anyone could easily get into. I actually read though that I think this one was a low, one of the lower rated movies in the franchise, alongside A Good Day to Die Hard. Because. <laughs> Even Live for Your Die Hard is like the second highest in this franchise. Yeah, and I always thought that. It's the first. Okay, this is how the ratings are ranked. Put, it? Rank, put what? Oh. Second one's underneath. All right. yeah, I, I always thought this one had the coolest artwork. But what I'm saying is, out of all the rated ones, I'm, like, as far as Rotten Tomatoes, it goes first movie, Live Free, Vengeance, to Good Day. But the first one being obviously the best, right? Yes. And then Live for Your Die Hard was the second ranked. And yet people say that one's the worst. <clears throat> or the second worst. I don't get people. People make no sense. I mean, <clears throat> all I have is problems I say. This movie is just about as classic as the original. It, it's a solid movie. Yeah, it's solid. Yeah. I've seen movies that, that got better, good ratings that were terrible and more better than this. And Ghostbusters. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Ghostbusters. <coughs> Ghostbusters. 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 I'm sorry. So is that all you can say? Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> you mean Ghostbusters? Answer. <coughs> <coughs> yes, I remember. The girl has to choke on your explanations. Yes, Rogue One reference. Yes. I wanted more Vader. <laughs> but yeah, is that that's about it? What we can say about the movie? Yeah. Yep. So hope you guys enjoyed our video, and we will hopefully check out. I never, I never actually read. One thing I can say, I never read the book that, that this one's based on. But after seeing this, I'm gonna give it a try. Did you ever read the first first movie's book? Yeah. The, they last forever. Yeah, I see. I read that one. I haven't read the the, it, the one that's supposed to be a sequel to the this. What did you say it was called? The, the detectives. Detect that's nothing lasts forever. No, you said you said that. Book. No, nothing lasts forever is a sequel to Detective. Yeah, that's on top of the Detectives. That's I never read that one either. I just said okay. I just read the first one. But... No, nothing lasts forever is the sequel. Okay, the Detective is the first one. That's what I'm. That's what I mean. I've read the book based on the first one. He's weird. You're weird too. Anyway, that's that's our review, and we will 
be watching um, Die Hard with a Vengeance, somehow we'll watch it. Yeah. Even if I have to find it online, we'll watch it. Um, so that's been our review. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.